بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين that is with Allah's name the merciful benefactor the merciful redeemer all praise due to Allah the guardian cherisher evolver and sustainer of all of the worlds and all of the systems of knowledge if you enjoy listening to this particular lecture we encourage you strongly to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Sadiq Jihad. That's S I D D E Q Jihad J I H A D. If you go to that particular channel, you'll see a red subscribe button, and we appreciate it very much if you would click on it and encourage others to do so. I thank you, Imam Sadiq Jihad. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuhu. That is the peace of God be upon you, the mercy of Allah, his blessings, and his paradise. Thank you. I want to uh, bring to our attention um, a, um, achievement, a publication uh, that has been uh, produced and it's produced for our community, mainly for our community, but it will serve anybody who wants uh, some uh, help from the material that, that are put into this publication. And uh, the book is called uh, The Language of Revelation, uh, Lugatul Tenzil, the, the, the uh, language of translation. And it is by a brother that I have known to be dedicated and devoted to the study of Quranic Arabic and the teaching of that subject to our students and to grown-ups as well. And that is Brother Siddiq Jahad. Uh, I think most of us know him here. Brother Siddiq Jahad, will you please stand and face the audience? So, yeah, this is Brother Siddiq Jihad. So I highly recommend this book for you all who are studying grown-ups, but also for our youngsters who are studying in the separate, separate organized uh, Quranic studies classes, uh, and uh, who are also studying in, in the school system, our school system, Claire Muhammad school system, uh, Claire Muhammad schools. In like the one in Atlanta and Washington D.C., uh, Chicago, and many places. And I highly recommend this book, The Language of Revelation. It's Quranic, Arabic, with, with uh, lessons and studies to improve your ability to read the Quran and get more understanding and to qualify yourself, inshallah, to be a teacher one day. Because out of you, from you who are, who are interested in Quranic Arabic, we are going to get our next generation of teachers and imams and leaders, you know. So Allah be with you all and bless you uh, to benefit from these wonderful projects and publications that our community is producing. This is one. We have others. We have others that I have seen and uh, grateful to Allah for students and scholars like our brother Sadiq Jihad. Congratulations, my brother. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. This is Imam Sadiq Jihad. You can secure the book by going to our website www.sadiqjihad.com. That's S I double D double E Q Jihad J I H A D dot com, or you can send a postal money order or any type of money order to Post Office Box four zero one one six five Redford R E D F O R D Michigan four eight two four zero. My email address is Sadiq. That's S I double D double E Q at M S N dot com. And the phone number where we can be reached is 
five two four six. I thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. This particular ayah goes on to read Kala Rabbi Arini Endur Ileka Kala Len Tarani Walakin Nindur Ilal Jabali Fanistakara Makanahu Fasaufa Tarani Falemma Tajella Rabbuhu Lil Jabali Ja'alahu dakkan wa khara Musa sa'iqan falamma afaqa qala subhanaka tubtu ilayka wa ana alwalul mu'minin The entire ayah translated by Abdullah Yusuf Ali When Moses came to the place appointed by us and his Lord addressed him he said, O oh my Lord, show thyself to me that I may look upon thee. Allah said, By no means can you see me direct, or can thou see me direct, the old English uh, word for you. Can thou see me direct, but look upon the mount, or mountain, if it abides in its place, then you shall See me. When his Lord manifested his glory on the mountain, he made it as dust, and Moses fell down in a swoon. When he recovered his senses, he said, Glory be to thee, to thee I turn in repentance, and I am the first to believe. Now I must admit that I did change the English translation a bit. So it's not entirely the translation of Abdullah Yusuf Ali that I just read. So many times I have a habit of taking the T-H-O-U, which is thou, and immediately transferring it into you. But at any rate, uh, this is a very wonderful ayah of the glorious Quran. And I believe that Allah blessed me to have some kind of understanding on it. I wrote an article some years ago entitled The Mountains of Faith. And it's contained in my book entitled Islam in View, a select collection of articles from the Good News Journal. And before I even go into the tafsir of this particular ayah, I just want to read the foreword that Imam Warfti Muhammad gave to this particular book. And I think it's a very interesting uh, foreword. And I read it now. Just as the Bible influenced the English language, when the Quran reached the Arabs, who had a high level of appreciation for Arabic literature, the Quran influenced the Arabic language. Quranic Arabic, or Quranic Arabic, raised the level of excellence for Arabic as a language. What is today called classical Arabic, or Fusha, is the result of the influence of Quranic Arabic on the language of the Arabs, and many other people who speak the language. Imam Sadiq Jihad is an ardent student and teacher of Quranic Arabic. The materials from which he has gained his knowledge begins with the Quran and includes popular Arabic dictionaries and lexicons. I recommend Imam Sadiq Jihad's book, Islam in View, a select collection of articles from the Good News Journal for all students of the Quran and classical Arabic. End of quote. Praise be to Allah. I mention that in light of the fact that uh, the way that that forward came about was the fact that Imam had saw a copy of my first printing, or actually second printing of the book, and he had his daughter Bakira give me a call, and he wanted to sell the book through the ministry, through his ministry. And something happened that it didn't go through the ministry, a lot of skullduggery occurred, and eventually I was able to sell it through WDM Publications. That's a different story, but I could tell you without a doubt that uh, it was some stuff that happened that was uh, un-Islamic by some people in his office that caused it to happen where I sold it through the WDM Publications as opposed to directly through 
the ministry. At any rate, I mention that to you from the standpoint that a lot of the tafsir that I give and others give in the African American community didn't all come directly from Imam Warafi Muhammad. So if you are a person who want to see the Quran only through the lens of Imam Warafi Muhammad, then you may have some problem with uh, wanting to accept or even open up your mind to the possible tafsir that uh, you will hear about this particular ayah. But at any rate, I go on with the tafsir, and it is this. I read the English and then try to explain it as concise as I can. When Musa came to the place appointed by us, speaking of by Allah, but he's using the authoritative we, which is us, and his Lord addressed him, I mean his Lord spoke to him, وَكَلَّمَهُ Now if you say or believe that Allah came down and he had, you know, the lips and the tongue and the vocal cords and all of that and talked to him in an audible voice, then you have put Allah into a physical manifestation and as Muslims we don't see Allah in a physical manifestation though we see the physical things that he has created. So we believe, oh Muslims, I do, that this conversation was to the soul and the mind and the heart, if you will, of Musa. That this thought came to him. He said, O oh my Lord, show thyself to me that I might look upon you. He's telling his Lord Allah that he wants to see a physical manifestation of him. And Allah's response is, Kala, that is, he said, Allah, Lantarani. Translated, he said, you will never, absolutely never see me. Lan is a prodigal which means absolutely never. It's what we call the subjunctive case in Arabic. Dealing with hopes, desires, and aspirations. So, Kala, Lan. Lan is an emphatic prodigal again, saying, never. Will you see me? So he's telling Moses quite pointedly that you will absolutely never see me in a physical manifestation. And as I you know, reflect upon this, I reflect upon the Bible language where I believe Suleiman, Solomon is reported to have said, at least in the second chronicles of the uh, Holy Bible, it reads, Oh God, I build this temple for you. But I know this temple can't hold you. Not even the heavens of heavens can hold you. This is reportedly the words of Solomon. So moving on here. But Allah gave him a condition. Well, I can nindur ila jabali. But look, he's commanding him, look to the mountain. Well, I can nindur and then he says and if it remains firm in its place then you will see me so this mountain that is being referred to here some may view it as being you know Mount Sinai or Mount Sinai or some physical mountain that Allah was pointing him to but we have to accept that Allah told him in the prior part of the ayah that you will absolutely never see me in the physical manifestation. So obviously this is a metaphorical statement. And I believe Allah has blessed me to understand it to be that Allah was telling Musa to look to his soul. The mountain is the mountain of faith within the soul. He told him to look to your soul. And if your soul and your nefs remains firm in its place, which is on the Sirat al Mustaqim, and you will always see me. And we know there's a hadith that says that believers many times get to the state of having so much taqwa in them that they 
a state where Allah becomes the hands from which their actions are carried out, the uh, tongue from which they speak, and the feet by which they walk, which is metaphorically saying from the comments of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that Allah becomes a guider of those who possess the taqwa that Allah is pleased with to the level that uh, will cause him to really, in fact, guide and steer the believer in all of his endeavors and all of his affairs. So this is the state that Allah is talking about for Musa by telling him, And if the nefs, the soul, the human being, remains in his proper place, Tarani, and the place is the Surat al Mustaqim, the straight path, the path of the Hanif, the path of uprightness, honor, and integrity. To so continue in the ayah, it says, using Lamma again, Falamma tajalla Rabbuhu lil Jabali. And when his Lord showed his glory to the mountain, this mountain is the soul and the nefs of Moses. Something happened when Allah showed his glory and his magnificence to the point where Musa did no longer have the mind of wanting to look to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala outside of himself, whereas he looked within his own nefs, his own soul, which is the mountain here in this particular ayah. And then he says, when he showed his glory to the mountain or to the soul of Moses, Ja'alahu Dekken, he made it level. Wakara Musa Sa'ikan, and Moses fell down in a swoon, like a momentary blackout. So obviously, this showing of Allah's glory to that mountain was affecting Moses directly because it registered in his soul and in his nefs that he does not have to see Allah outside of himself, but Allah can be felt from within the nefs, which is including the soul, the heart, and the mind of the human being. And it goes on to say, for lemma, using lemma again, fa is in front of it, meaning so, or consequently, or when. And so, for lemma afaka, khala subhanaka, tubtu ilayka wa ana alwallul mu'mineen. And when he recovered his senses from that swoon we we're talking about, that momentary blackout or awareness of the magnificence of what Allah had blessed him to understand, he said, Subhanaka, glory to you, O Allah. I turn in repentance. Why is he turning in repentance? Because he is asking Allah forgiveness for having the mind to want to see Allah in a physical, public manifestation. And then he went on to say, and I am the first of those who believe. And this is an idiomatic uh, expression which is indicating that this person is raring to go to a particular mindset or idea. Not necessarily that he was the first to believe because we know that there were other prophets and people before Musa that believed. So this is a lot like W.D. Muhammad and, and many of us who follow Farad Muhammad. We want to believe that Farad Muhammad was God in the physical flesh. And praise be to Allah, Imam Warfati Muhammad was blessed not to see Farad anymore as God in the person. And we pray Allah that those who follow the teachings of Elijah Muhammad and follow Farrakhan and, and that particular group will ultimately 
come to the mind that Farad Muhammad was not God and God did not appear in the person of Farad Muhammad. And we also pray that they will take it off of the final call that God appeared in the person of Farad Muhammad, God willing. So this is a quirk, obviously, in the psyche of many human beings that they want to see God in the physical flesh. And we know it's a quirk because we sit here today, or I sit here today, and you are existing here in the world today, and you know that people want to see Isa ibn Maryam, that is Jesus, the son of Mary, as God in the flesh or the son of God or the perfect man for some. But at any rate, we know that God is clearly telling us in the Quran, Kulhu wallahu ahad, Allahu samad, lam yalid wa lam yulad, wa lam yakullahu ahad. Say, He, Allah, is one entity. Kulhu Allahu ahad. Say, He, Allah, is one entity. Allahu Somad. Allah is the uncaused cause. Lam yalid wa lam yulad. He was not a father of any children, nor was he fathered or mothered by anything. And there's nothing like unto him. Lam yalid wa lam yulad wa lam yakullahu wa lam yakullahu kufuwan ahad. And there's nothing like unto him. And we have to easily accept that there's nothing like God because there's nothing exactly like you or me or anyone else. Even though they may be Identical twins. So praise be to Allah. Moses got it straight that he did no longer want to see God in a physical manifestation. And the next ayah says so beautifully. Kala ya Musa. He said, Oh Moses, in this tofai to ka alanasi be resad. Lati wa bikalami fakuv ma'a tai tuka wa kun min nashakirin. I'm having a problem of seeing, so I pardon me for not having the logic or and text so I could read it clearly. So let me just read it again in case I did make an error. Kala ya Musa. In this tafai tuka alanasi, be we salati wa be kalami fakuv ma'a tai tuka wa kun menashakirin. Allah said, after Moses repented and put it in his mind's eye that God. It's such a powerful force that he does not have to look outside of himself, but he can feel and sense and get the presence of God in his own being. Allah said, O oh Moses, I have chosen you above other men by the mission I have given thee and the words I have spoken to you. Take then the revelation which I give thee and be of those who give thanks. Uh, some years ago, during the month of Ramadan, Imam Warafti Muhammad, he came to the uh, Detroit Metropolitan Airport area. In fact, it was at the um, uh, Hampton Inn, if I'm not mistaken, where I interviewed him. And he was telling me the story, as he's told so many other people in, in so many lectures, that one day Elijah Muhammad, his father and his mother, were going to the temple, and he was the only one there in the house, and they told him that they'll be back in a, in a 
extended period of time and he was there by himself and he said he heard the uh, walls creaking and, and whatnot. He admitted that he was a bit afraid. He said he might have been about 12 years old or so if I'm not mistaken. But at any rate, I have it on tape, the, the interview. And he said that uh, by him being afraid, he was moved to make a dua. And the dua that he made was, Oh God, if I am not seeing you correctly, you know, dealing with the Farad Muhammad issue, please help me to see you correctly. And he said at that point he began to uh, feel that uh, he could not accept that Farad Muhammad was God in the person. And as, as you know, Allah blessed him to unravel the teachings and the mystical things and the myth stuff that Farad Muhammad gave to give us some kind of understanding of it as being mythological language for the most part. But praise be to Allah, we are now studying the glorious Quran and by now hopefully most of us have rejected the Yaqub myth and the other myths about the mother plane and other things that was taught to us by Elijah Muhammad who was mistaught by Farad Muhammad who was a man who came from the um, area of Asia which is now called Pakistan. This is the report that we have been given. So at any rate we thank Allah for blessing us not to have the mind of seeing him in a physical manifestation. And the moment that we see him in a physical manifestation, then we are going against the, the, the order that Allah has established. Because he says to us that everything, kulu men and everything physical is perishing. So we know that human beings perish, flesh perishes, but Allah does not perish, nor does he, ha nor does he have a deterioration about his being. He never tires, he never weakens or deteriorates. He is always shining in new splendor. In fact, it says in the Quran, Surah to Rahman, Kulla yawmin huwa fi shan. And every day he shines in new splendor, meaning he's creating new things all of the time, new nebulae. As black holes occur, new celestial bodies and other things are formed. Praise be to Allah. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. So I hope you gathered from this lesson that the mountain, the Jebel, is a metaphor for the nefs of the human being. And if the nefs of the human being remains on the Surat al Mustaqim, we will have a feeling on a sense of Allah's presence and his guidance. Praise be to Allah. And as I, you know, research this particular word Jebel in the Quran and in lexicons, I came across the same reference of the mountain referring to the soul in the surah entitled El Qariya. And I read it now. Al-Qariya Mal-Qariya Wa ma ajraka Mal-Qariya Yawma yakun al-nasu kal-farash al-mabathuth Wa takun al-jibalu ka-ihn al-manfush Translated by Abdullah Yusuf Ali, at least part of his translation I'll be using because you're familiar with it. The day of noise and clamor. What is the day 
of noise and clamor. And what will explain to you what the day of noise and clamor is. So here Allah is talking about al qariya And by the way, many of the Arabic words that begin with Qaf has to do with sound. Praise be to Allah. It's, they call it the science of uh, Balaga. To give you an example, Qara'a means he read, or he recited. That's noise or sound. Qala, he said. That's sound for sure. Khadatha means to make a bomb. Kabala, a kabala, I should say, means to kiss. Dealing with sound. Kabala, and so on. Praise be to Allah. There are so many wonderful things about this Lugat Tanzil, the Arabic language, that is very fascinating. So, if Allah gives you the rhetorical question, gives us the rhetorical question, and what will explain to you, or to thee, whatever, what the day of noise and clamor is, then we must assume that he has explained what this day is in this particular surah, or somewhere in the Quran. But I venture to say to you that he's explained it here in this particular surah 101. And he goes on to tell us, Yomak Yakunan Nasu Kalfarashil Mabatuth. It is a day wherein the human being will be like moths scattered about. This is a picture of the state of confusion and disorder. Like the confusion and disorder that you will witness if you see moths in the sky with a very strong wind. They will be clashing and bouncing off of one another in a state of confusion. So this day of noise and clamor is going to be marked by a lot of confusion and diversity, diverse paths. And then the next ayah says, and the mountains, here we have Jibal as opposed to Jebel. Jebel is one mountain, El Jibal is the plural. Jibal will be like carded wool, Adullah Yusuf Ali says. So from studying this particular word, I know that it not only means carded, but it means colored and changed. So, and the mountains, or and the souls, we're looking at it now as, and the souls of the human beings will be like colored, carded, Wool. Now, if you take it literally, you're saying that this mountain, the mountain which is, or the mountains which is hard rock and dirt and all of that, will be transformed into some soft, fuzzy material that you pull off of the, the lamb or the sheep. And we know that that is not something that naturally occurs. That you can take something that has properties of hardness, like rock and, and dirt and all of that, and it is transformed into the fuzzy uh, wool-like material that we make sweaters and hats and so on from. So obviously to me, for my study, this is definitely a metaphor saying to us, old Muslims, and the souls of the human being will be colored and carded off like wool is carded off and colored. And if you know anything about the process of making clothing and hats and sweaters and coats and so on and so forth, you know that the wool of the sheep is shaved off or cut off and is very mangled and again in a state of disorder akin to the disorder that you see when you see moths scattered about in a windstorm. And so these souls will be brought back to a state of being separated from each other and carted off. 
So if I say to you, I want you to card a file for me, I'm saying to you that I want you to put it in alphabetical order. That means that you are going to put the A's in one section, the B's in one section, and follow the alphabetical order of the letters to follow the A or the B, etc. Why do a person want to file card it off? Because they want to be able to get back to it. So so it is in this metaphorical rundown by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's saying to us, O Muslims, I believe, and the souls will be carted off. Like I was originally coming out of the wounds of my mother, as you were coming out of the wounds of your mother. A tabula rasa. I had my original ummiyin, good nature, aspiring to stay in that good nature. But I became changed or colored from my original nature by the impact of the social condition that I lived in from what I saw on TV, radio, with my own eyes, etc. And I became tainted, as we all have, as the Bible language say, fallen short of the glory of God. The Quran says that if he were to punish the human beings, for the wrong that they did, not a single one of us will be left on the earth. He did not say, Illa and Biyah, except the prophets. He didn't say that. So we know that even the prophets were not angelic beings. So that's another khutbah. But at any rate, this carding of the wool is speaking of the nefs of the human beings being separate in a file, like Sadiq's file is carted off just like the strands of wool are carted off and separate to give fine uh, texture to a hat or a coat or mohair sweater or whatever so it is in this situation Allah is saying and the souls will be like colored carded wool meaning my soul it changed from the original but yet my whole record, my strand of life, I repeat, my strand of life will be separate from the other strands of life of the other souls that have existed here on this earth. So, right after that, carding off, meaning what I did is separate from what you did. Every tub is sitting on its own bottom now. The judgment is about to come. The Bible language tells us it. Every tub sits on its own bottom. The Quran says, Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu alaykum and fusahum. O you who believe, O you who have faith, O you who have trust, your own souls is on your souls or on yourselves. Again, Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu alaykum on you all and fusahum, your own souls. So the judgment is, is about to take place in the concluding ayahs of this particular surah. Because he's already separate, separated. The angel has your record. He has my record. And it's befitting that my record will not be confused with your record. And we know that even in a criminal case situation, they have your record. The probation officer goes out and gets your record. And he talks to the uh, family members and all of that. And they separate, separate the records of each of the guilty parties and give them the judgment accordingly. And so it is if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will give us a judgment according to his mercy and his judgment. And some of the wrong that we did or we do, we know Allah will blot it out because of the good that we do. So that's why he tells us in the Quran, Hell jazaul isani illal isan. Is there any reward for good other than good? So then which of the favors of you two's Lord will you deny? Who is the two? The jinn and the human being. So now it says, 
فأما من تكلت موازينه then he whose balance of good deeds will be found heavy فهوه في إشاية رادية he will be or she will be in a life of good pleasure and satisfaction فأما من خفت موازينه but he whose balance or she whose balance of good deeds will be found light فأمهو هاوية will have his mother as the bottomless pit. Abdullah Yusuf Ali says will have his home in a bottomless pit. So fa meaning so or consequently umuhu means his mother is hawiya. Hawiya is a bottomless pit. Meaning his nurturer will be the bottomless pit, the hellfire. Wa ma adraka ma he uh, knowest thou what it is? Abdullah Yusuf Ali translates. It is a fire blazing fiercely. So if you follow the flow of this concise tafsir that I'm giving, you will come to understand that I'm postulating or pontificating, if you will, that the mountains will be like Carter Wool is saying. And that the souls slash records of the human being will be carted off like the carding of wool after it had been in a mangled state and become unmangled and untangled and set forth in a clear, distinct way where you can see the fine threads and the fine strands. And so it is with the records of the human being. I will not be blamed for the wrong that you do, and you will not be judged for the wrong that I do. Although we know that in many instances we will be punished for guiding or steering or influencing people to the wrong. So after I had come to this position of the soul having a reference to the mountain or vice versa it dawned upon me that Allah is giving you and I a clue that the mountain is the nafs of the human being because of the fact that the word wool which is manfush its uh, Arabic root letters is nafasha nun fa and sheen whereas the root of the nefs is nafasa, noon, fa, and seen. So right there in that particular ayah of five, you can see the word jibal, and I'm trying to say it again as the nefs, or the anfus, that is the souls. Ka'ithnil manfus will be like colored, carded el manfus, or wool. Man fush, mean fata, noon sukun, man, and then fa with dhamma, lengthen with wow, with the sheen. Nafasha, again, is the root of war. Praise be to Allah. I hope you can appreciate what I'm coming forth with in this particular tafsir of the Surah Al Qariya. And as I indicated earlier in the Surah 7, verse 143. The Jabo is also a reference to the soul or the nefs of the human being. So why is this important for you and I to understand? It's important for many reasons. And one of the main lessons that I myself get out of the Surah al qariya is the fact that Allah is telling you and I that as long as our good deeds outweigh our bad deeds, we can make it to the Jannah. So I always say to people, I can do 51% good and 49% wrong and still make it to the paradise. But the problem is, you don't know and I don't know what Allah is going to 
chalk up in our record as a good deed and what he's going to punish us for as a bad deed. So the position of the Muslim is to keep piling up good deeds, do more and more and more and more good deeds, and perchance doing good deeds will become a habit in our being, and we will do very, very little of the bad deeds, and we will have a scale wherein, God willing, it will be 99% good and 1% bad. So praise be to Allah. I hope that you benefited from the tafsir that I've given on the two, or I should say the whole surah 101 and the ayah 7, 143. And in summary, the lesson set forth, if you followed it, is that you and I should never see Allah in a physical manifestation. And we should always know that if we do the right thing and endeavor hard to maintain our position on the Surat al Mustaqim, we will feel and sense the presence of God and we will receive the guidance and the favor and the protection of God. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, highly exalted is He. And the lesson from El Qariya is the fact that there will be a judgment and the souls will be set forth in a kitab mubin a clear record and my record will not be confused with your record or anyone else's record praise be to Allah so the, the mind of the Muslim is not to gamble with Allah and try to do half good and half bad but the mind of the Muslim is to keep piling up Good deeds, good deeds, good deeds, good deeds, and have honor and integrity. So I conclude there, and if you have any comments or questions about this particular tafsir, or if you have interest in securing the book, The Language of Revelation, or my other book, Islam in View, please contact me. My email is sadiq at msn.com, and the book can be secured via phone also I can do a transaction over the phone 313-532-5246 again that's 313-532-5246 assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuhu wa jannatuhu that is the peace of God be upon you his mercy his blessings and his garden Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen That is with Allah's name the merciful benefactor the merciful redeemer all praise due to Allah the guardian cherisher evolver and sustainer of all of the worlds and all of the systems of knowledge If you enjoyed listening to this particular lecture we encourage you strongly to subscribe to our YouTube channel that's Sadiq Jihad that's S I D D E Q Jihad J I H A D if you go to that particular channel you'll see a red subscribe button and we appreciate it very much if you would click on it and encourage others to do so I thank you Imam Sadiq Jihad Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh that is the peace of God be upon you, the mercy of Allah, his blessings, and his paradise. Thank you.